edit by color add-on by Kiri Engine brings photo editing color selection tools to mesh editing in Blender. Make mesh selections by picking colors on your model. Use these selections to edit, fake, and re-photologize with ease and speed. Reading or watching the full documentation is recommended, but before we dive in, here are the most important points and a quick guide to get you started. Any model can be used, providing the model has a color texture and the UV map. The color selections will be based on the selected color texture. The selection resolution is relative to the face density of your model. Subdivisions can be increased from the add-on to add more faces. Red colors may be harder to select than other colors due to some blender limitations. But with patience and tweaking of the color thresholds, the right selection can usually be achieved. Quick guide. Import an object. Your object can be any mesh object with a color texture. Select your object and from the add-on, press Add Edit by Color Modifier. Specify the base color texture used for color selection. The default color selection is a blue and the default effect is set material. You'll see any blue areas of the mesh replaced with the Kiri logo material to visualize your selection. From the color selection menu, pick a color from your mesh. Use the selection settings to dial in the color, masking, smooth the borders, or remove small artifacts from your selection. Full settings are covered in the color selection part of this tutorial. Once a selection has been made, try changing the live effects to dynamically delete or smooth parts of the mesh. There are many more features that will be covered in the dedicated section. Installation. The add-on was made with Blender 4.2. The add-on might function with earlier versions of Blender, but full usability can't be guaranteed. To install the add-on, make sure you've downloaded the zip file, edit by color by Kiri Engine, followed by the version number. Drag and drop the zip file from a file browser into the Blender window. An install dialog will appear. Press OK. The add-on can now be found in the 3D viewport. Pressing the N key will bring up the end panel where you can find the add-on. Add modifier. If the active object doesn't have the edit by color modifier, one button will show on the interface. Add edit by color modifier. After pressing this button, the active object will be given the modifier. Once the active object has the modifier, more settings will be shown in the add-on interface. Active object. After adding the modifier, you will be shown settings for the active object. You can set the object's UV map name, which by default is set to the standard UV map. Then you can set the base texture that will be used for the color selection. You must set the base texture before the rest of the add-on settings are shown. If your model is too low poly for a good selection, you can add subdivisions with subdivide mesh. Live effects. Live effects involve no add-on code. They're produced entirely by Geometry Nodes modifier, and so they're entirely interactive. Choosing effects will cause parameters specific to that effect to be shown on the interface. This is the default effect immediately after adding the modifier, since it's the easiest way to preview your current selection. By default, the material will be set to use the Kiri logo material, but you can choose any material you like. None will cause the modifier to have no effects. This can be useful if the effects of the modifier are making it difficult to see parts of your mesh to select. Delete faces will delete the selected faces from the mesh. Smooth will let you smooth the selected faces on the mesh, but be careful raising the smooth iteration value too high can actually have the reverse effect and make these faces stand out too much. Smooth and set material combines the set material and smooth function. Decouple loops is an advanced feature that we'll cover in its own section. 
This allows the creation of quad topology loops around the current selection. Color selection. This is the most important part of the add-on since it affects all other functions. You can choose if you want your selection to be colored equal, not equal, brighter than, or darker than the target color. By clicking the color box, an eyedropper will be shown and a color can be selected from your mesh. The color selection can be fine-tuned using the color, saturation, and value thresholds. The filter small island will remove selection islands by size. This can be useful if you have some very small selection artifacts. Grow shrink selection will grow or shrink the current selection depending on whether the value is positive or negative. Masking allows you to specify a masked object to affect the selection. You can choose for faces inside or outside the object to mask the current selection. If masking is enabled, an extra button will be shown, allowing you to quickly add a wireframe cube object, which can be useful as a mask object. The selection edges are representative of your model's topology, so rough topology can make for rough edges. The boundary of the selection can be smoothed with smooth boundary, but pushing it too high can cause artifacts to appear. Edit Mesh. The Edit Mesh panel has several common edit mode features, but they are based on the current color selection. Pressing Select will enter Edit Mode and select the current color selection. Split will split the color selection from the object and those faces will be removed from the original. Duplicate will make a copy of the faces and the original object will be left intact. Each of these effects requires applying and re-adding the edit by color modifier. This is stated in a pop-up window whenever you use these features. This means that any subdivision created by the subdivide mesh feature in the active object menu can be applied destructively if you want by checking apply subdivisions. You can also specify after the operation is complete what you want the reapplied modifiers effects to be set to. None, set material or no change. Texture. The texture features are the most complex feature set in the whole add-on. They allow you to grab a small area of your object and use the texture from this area to replace other parts of your mesh. This can be great for erasing mesh defects or distracting areas of a mesh asset. Create material attribute will create a new attribute on the mesh from the current color selection. A material can be specified in the pop-up window and a new attribute node with the newly created attribute will be added to the assigned material. This can be very useful for creating shader masks. The patch baking and unify textures functions are designed to be used sequentially from top to bottom. Before using add bake patch, place your 3D cursor somewhere on the mesh that has a uniform chunk of texture, an area that could be used to fill gaps in your texture. Add bake patch will then let you choose the texture resolution that you want to bake to. A mesh plane will be added of the 3D cursor and the plane will have a shrink wrap modifier applied with your face mesh as the target. Once the plane is added, you can scale, move and rotate the plane to the best position. But moving too far from the original 3D cursor location may cause shrink wrap issues. So it's best to place your 3D cursor first. Once the bake patch is in position, you can use bake to patch to bake the original textures to the patch. A pop-up will appear to check that you are baking from the correct object to the correct patch and material. You can set the bake device if you don't want to use your GPU and the bake sample can be set. 
by a default n is usually sufficient. You can choose to bake any combination of defeat, roughness, and normal passes, and then hit OK. After pressing OK, the state of bar will notify you of your baked progress, and it says not to select or deselect any of your objects while baking to stop any baked errors. Once baking is finished, you can relink the newly baked textures in the bake patch material by clicking Link Baked Textures. If the bake is successful, your bake patch should now look invisible on your base mesh. In an image editor window, you can check out the newly baked textures. With the patch baked, you can now use the bake patch material for your set material effects. Since the UV scales of your original model and the bake patch will probably be different, you can change the scale value in the bake patch material to better suit your model. You can now use the Unify Textures features to combine the original texture and the bake patch texture into one single unified texture. Baked Combined Material will let us specify the same settings, resolution, and passes as the Baked Patch button. Again, after pressing OK, the state of bar will notify you of the baked progress. Again, wait until the bakes are complete before selecting or deselecting any object. Once complete, new textures should be created that combine the original texture with the set material texture. You can complete the unified baking process by replacing your old material and bake patch material with a new combined material by pressing switch to baked material. And if you want, you can now delete any leftover bake patches. So, in object mode, only one button will appear on the sculpt menu, selection to face set. Pressing this will turn the current color selection into a sculpting face set and the mode will be changed from object to sculpt. The face sets will be visible as a separate color from the rest of the mesh. Once in sculpt mode, the interface will change and new options will be shown. Auto mask by face set will make the current brush only affect a face set. Hover your mouse over a face set and click to begin sculpting. While the mouse is held down, moving the cursor outside of the face set area will have no effect. Face set from visible will set all currently visible areas of your mesh to the same face set. If your whole mesh is visible, it effectively clears all face sets. Below these buttons are some useful hotkeys. Hover your mouse over a face set and use one of the hotkeys to expand or shrink the current face set area. Decouple loop. In many cases, you might want to retopologize a scan or model manually. Forming loops around certain areas of your model is a good way to start retopology. Decouple loop will create a loop of quad topology around the color selection. This feature allows you to get a jump start on retopologizing a scan. First, the live effect must be set to retopo loop. Retopo loop's effect is entirely geometry node based and so it's interactive like the other live effects. The color selection will immediately have a loop of quad faces drawn around its borders. You can preview the loop with or without the base mesh by toggling preview with base. The quad density can be controlled with loop resolution. Playing with this can often fix or even create topology defects, so it's best to adjust it. The whole loop can be smoothed with smooth loop, and the width of the quad faces can be controlled with loop width. The offset of the loop from the surface of the base mesh can be controlled with surface offset. To make the loop topology fit the base mesh better, enable shrink wrap. If there are messy areas of your color selection, the loop may not be entirely clean. You can attempt to clean up the loop by previewing the curve that generates the loop 
with preview curves. You can then delete any small curves and defects with remove shorter than. However, it's best noted that the best method of cleaning up a loop is often by adjusting the original color selection. Once you're happy with the loop placement, you can apply loops. You can choose if you want the modifier on the base object to be set to set material, recouple loop, or none after applying the loop. You can choose to add, shrink, wrap, and subdiv. This will give the applied loop a subdivision surface modifier and a shrink wrap modifier targeting the base object. If you have created and applied several loops, you can join them into a single object, select edges, and then connect those edges with F to fill them. This is a great way to start new topology quickly. Resources. If you find yourself needing some help while using the add-on, or you want to return to this video documentation, the documentation button will launch a web browser, opening a page with the add-on's documentation. The tutorial video button will launch a web browser with this video. And if you want to grab some more free add-ons, the see all add-ons on Blender Market button will open a web page with our add-on market page. If you need to grab some colorful scans to practice using the add-on, you can get free scans each week on the Kiri Engine homepage, or grab the Kiri Engine app to make your own scans to play with. If you ever want to reach out for help scanning or using the add-on, consider joining the Kiri Engine Discord or Kiri Engine Reddit.